let's say you want to get an apartment. Your budget isn't great, but it's certainly far from terrible. Now, you're not staying in the area, so you need an expert to talk to. So what do you do? You go online and you Google a few pages, or maybe you go on social media and you search realtors in that particular area. Now, of course, several realtors will come up and you'll go through all of their timelines. But what will actually make you choose the business or agent you finally choose to help you find that new apartment? Is it how great their content looks? Is it how attractive their pictures are or how funny their videos are? Or maybe it's the number of engagement that they get. Wait, it isn't any of those? What is it then? Is it whether they sound like they know what they're talking about? I bet you it's that one that you check off the most. If you're smart with your money, you certainly don't want to give it to an amateur. You want it to go to someone who can actually fix your problem and provide the sort of value that you want. You don't want to give it to someone who seems like they know just as much as you do about buying in that new area. That's not who you want your money going to. That's not who you want to trust. You want it to go to someone who not only knows what they are doing, but to someone who can confidently trust to get you that end result that you're looking for. No matter how many certifications you see on the wall of a doctor, you probably won't fully trust them until they can assure you that they know what they are doing. It's the same for people when they choose a business or an entrepreneur to work with. It's not enough to be an expert. You have to also convince potential customers that you are an expert. So what this means is that the reason you aren't getting too many sales or engagement is that simply people don't trust you. Now, that doesn't mean that they think you're lying. They just don't think you know what you're talking about to the level they're looking for. They don't think of you as an expert in your industry just yet. And since they don't think that, when they have a problem to fix, they don't necessarily think of you or they won't come to you. They will go to the experts in their opinions. Now, this phenomenon, this is very common with entrepreneurs who try to expand their business through social media. These entrepreneurs are usually very knowledgeable people, but they simply don't know how to transform this knowledge from what they know to what they can show. That has a nice ring to it, actually, don't you think? Anyways, in this video, I'll be giving you five tips to help you take that expert knowledge in your mind from what you know to what you can show. And remember, the more people who see you as an expert in your field, the likelier the chances of them turning to you for advice and helping them fix their problem. And once that begins to happen, you can expect to see your engagements, your sales, your views, and everything else in between start to arise. The overriding point is this. If you want people to listen to you, you need to know what you're talking about. And if you do know what you're talking about, as you probably do, you need to know how to let people know that. So let's get right to it. If you want people to see you as an expert, you need to show them why. You need to show practical value. No one will pay attention to you if they can't point to a time where the information that you shared has helped them. Share tips, tricks, hacks, all of that. Now let's say that you own a business that sells bikinis, for example. You need to share content on how people can find quality bikinis or content on how they can take care of the ones that they own. It works for literally every kind of item that you're selling. It doesn't matter if you're selling shoes or sweaters or services. As long as you put out helpful information concerning these things, you are showing value and your audience will respect you for it. And if they respect you and see you as someone who generally knows what they're talking about, they will come to you with their problems and you can get them to really get them started on their sales funnel. Now, after showing your potential clients and audience value, you need to do something extra, something to make them trust you. Take, for example, the random person who wants to learn project management. Now, this person doesn't know the first thing about project management, so they are pretty clueless about most of the value you are providing. Now, on the other hand, you sell online courses that deal with product management, and this is a potential customers that you want to eventually convert. So how do you do that? How do you convince someone who doesn't know what they want that you know what you were talking about? Quite simple, you show results. That's it. Even if the person can't necessarily recognize the great value, they can recognize results. They can see when something works, and that's exactly what you need to do to show them. 
So after releasing those hacks, tips, and such, ask people whether they took your advice and whether it worked for them. If you know what you're talking about, a lot of people will rush to your DMs to testify that your methods indeed worked. You, in return, need to post these results to boost your expert value. That way, even the most clueless person will understand that you know what you were talking about and will, as a consequence, take you a lot more seriously. But even that, though, may not be enough. If you are selling something complex, like a service, for example, it may be difficult to put in appropriate context just how much better your audience's life can be with your particular help. That's when you need to start telling them stories. Now, when I say storytelling, I don't mean you should start telling stories by moonlight. I mean another kind of story entirely. And the only kind of story relevant here is the story of your clients or the story of your brand. It's simple. You either tell the story of how your brand has evolved to become what it is now, or your audience will fill in the gaps. And I can tell you for free that they will most likely not fill in the gaps with flattering stuff. A great majority of them will think your brand or business is where it is because of minimal work or even worse, luck. Here's another thing I'll tell you for free. No one will trust someone who got lucky or someone who will put in minimal work. Instead, they'll trust someone who used experience, expertise, hard work to grow their business or brand to whatever it is now. And that's who you need to paint yourself as. Tell your story. Highlight your defining moments. Talk about your struggles, your difficulties, and how you use your expert knowledge to solve problems. Talk about where your expertise has even taken you within your business. Talk about huge projects you've taken, big partners you've worked with. If there's any situation or story that highlights your expertise, talk about it. You never, you literally can never say too much about your journey. But of course, your story isn't the only story you should share. You should also be sharing the stories of people you've helped. So clients who've gone away from your business feeling satisfied. How did they actually approach you? What sort of problems did they have? How did you use your expertise to solve their problems? Are they coming back now? How has your expertise helped them live better and more fulfilled lives? Talk. Talk, talk, literally write it down as a caption, make videos, make reels, make IGTV, YouTube videos, make long blog posts. I really don't care. It really doesn't matter as long as you keep talking. Now with these three steps, you're almost there, but you aren't quite there yet because people have seriously bad memories and I am just like that person. I have a bad memory. And since your page isn't the only one that they are following, it's easy for you to get lost in the hazy corridors of their mind. So that's why you need to do one more thing. Remind them that you exist. So you may think that everyone knows what you do. After all, your posts are well received. You get loads of comments and views. So how, how is it possible that people don't know yet what you do? Is that even possible? My answer to that is yes. Your business may be important to you and you probably wake up every single morning thinking about it, but I need you to know that that's not the same for everyone else or even most people. You are mostly just another page that shows up on a timeline to most of your followers. And the way to stay in their minds and hearts is to remind them constantly of what it is that you do. You can never overestimate the power of that single act. Tell them over and over and over again what it is that you do. Be specific. What does your course do? What can they expect after buying your course? Why should they buy your items? Keep on telling them this and you will be imprinted in their minds, but it takes consistent effort. So when that need eventually does arise, and it will, they will know that they know someone who can meet that. Repeating what you do is a great way to constantly stay in people's minds so that they remember you are an expert. But one final way to steal the deal is really giving them something to remember you by. Before I start, let me just say this. I love lead magnets. They work so well for me and are great at driving sales. So forgive me a bit if I'm a little bit too enthusiastic walking you down this road. A lead magnet is a marketing term for a free item or service given away to gather contact details. So really a lead magnet could be anything. But if you want your audience to see you as an expert, your lead magnet better be something that displays your expertise. So if you run an online course, it better be a sneak peek into your courses that show that you are an expert. 
if you want your lead magnet to be an item, it better be a well-made one. Whatever the lead magnet is, it must tell the receiver that, hey, this person knows what they are doing, and that's it. So let me do a quick recap on the five tips you want to follow to boost your expert status. So first, show practical value, then show the results. You'll want to always share stories and really constantly remind people what it is that you do. And lastly, you always, and I mean always, want to have a lead magnet going out in your business. It is the fastest way to boost you as an authority and show up more as an expert. But promise me something, my friend. Promise me that you've written down all five tips and you are going to implement one per day this week. I do not want you watching these episodes and not actually implementing what you learn. You aren't going to get better results simply by filling your mind with what to do. You've got to do the work. But you know that. I know you know that. I cannot wait to see how you start implementing these tips. So feel free to tag me in your post. I'm at Lisa and Coaching across all social media platforms. I am actually happy to give you some advice when you do tag me in them. Now, before I go, I would like to say this. You may think that the platform you use matters. But in my opinion, what matters is where your audience hangs out. So as long as your engagement continues to grow and you can reach more people, you don't need to be on all social media platforms. If it's TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, Facebook, just find where your audience hangs out. And then all you need to do is focus there. But as always, my friends, if you learn something new today, can you please do me a favor? Like this episode, share it with those who might need it. And finally, subscribe to my channel for more content like this and really just be a part of this amazing entrepreneur community. My name is Lita Ann, and that's all I have for you today. Thank you so, so much for being here today. I will see you next week. Bye for now.